So, since we do not have an MLS game for another 10 days, well, actually, technically, that's not true. There is one MLS game that's going to be happening this weekend, and that, of course, is between Sporting KC versus Austin FC. But besides those two teams, pretty much everybody is not going to be playing a MLS game until June 18th. I thought this is a time where I'm going to start doing videos talking about, about some teams that is kind of off to a good start to the season now basically do individual video looking at why they're off to a good start to the season and then of course the opposite looking at teams that are off to a bad start to the season and make individual video talk about why exactly they're off to such a slow start to this season so today i am going to be talking about the quakes now you know the quakes this season this has been an interesting start for this team and it's not because of the fact that that this has been a roller coaster start to the season because you know if you support the quakes or follow the quakes closely especially under almeida you know this is kind of a thing that shouldn't surprise a lot of people because you know in in part of the almeida experience the team tends to always have a period where there there is definitely the highs of highs but then it's gonna fall by the lows of lows and it seems like right now the quakes are enduring that period where it's part of the almeida experience where they are now enduring the lows of lows now that being said you know the reason why i still said it's interesting is because depending on who you ask you you could maybe have some quakes fans that might have a pessimistic viewpoint by saying that this has been an absolute disaster start to the season especially this four game loot losing streak is a complete free fall or you could ask some Quakes fan that maybe have like an optimistic viewpoint and say, yeah, you know, I know that they have lost four in a row. But when you look at these four games that they, they lost, they have not really been outplayed in any of those four games. In fact, you could maybe even say they've been unlucky in some some of these games. The fact that they, they weren't able to be, be very good in terms of finishing. And they also will point out the expected seat. C goal where you know the, the quakes believe it or not if you look at the expectancy goal they actually have the highest expectancy goal out of any team right now in mls now for me if i have to kind of look at how this team has, has been and you know if you of course watch my my video for a long time you know i'm uh i'm kind of a bit of a pessimistic fan fan in terms of looking at the quakes but you know this season i'm kind of started to be become a little bit more positive and just kind of looking at this season i'm started to kind of go more on the optimistic route where i also think that you know as bad as things is right now where the team is endured on a losing streak they ha they really haven't been playing badly in these four, these four games that they have lost and you know i also kind of will will, will, will kind, kind of kind of said the same thing of what many optimistic quakes fans would say is that you know they've been very unlucky in terms of the fact that they haven't been very very good in terms of, of finishing and if they can just be a little bit better in terms of that then things could definitely have changed with this team now that being said do i think there's still problem with this team absolutely do i think there's need some reinforcement that we need to make in the summer absolutely i mean honestly when i look at this team i just feel like this team is still not good enough in terms of not only potentially make the playoffs but if they want to maybe make make a a, a playoff run where they don't just go, go one one and done they need to have a much stronger squad than the one that they currently have right now now in terms of looking at their record uh their record is three oh and five uh they score 11 goals this season which you know in the western conference that's kind of like right in the middle but if you're in the eastern conference they actually have scored the second most goal of any team in the eastern conference and knowing the fact that this season with the way that goals is is started to go down you know scoring 11 goals in eight game isn't as bad as as the fact that as it is in previous year where when the goals were definitely going up that might not have, have been a very goal, good goal scoring stat when you are eight games into the season now that being said 10 of those 11 goals came in the first three games and the last last uh or for 10 10 of those 11 goals actually came from the first four games and then of course during this four game losing streak they only have scored one one goals and in terms of the goals allowed they of course have allowed 12 goals which is definitely not good and it just kind of shows this team still have some defensive issue and the goal differential is now at minus one now looking at the first eight games of the season uh you know the quakes they did get off to a bit of a slow start and actually i, I wrote the incorrect uh score line for this game 
Uh, they didn't get off to a good start by winning 2-1 on the road against Houston, but they lost 2-1 against the, the Dynamo on the road to start the season. But you could also say say that they probably could have got got a point out of that game, especially with the way that Wando had that big opportunity late in the game. And if we would have put that one away, then, you know, the the Quakes w- w- would have actually got a draw out, out of the first game of the season and I did say that you know getting a draw in Houston I think that's that's really good because you know I know the Dynamo a lot of people didn't expect that they were going to do a lot this season but I also said that the Quakes they always tend to struggle whenever they play against the Dynamo at BBVA Compass Stadium and getting a point out there is is almost like a, a miracle whenever that that happened and they almost did it there then in the very next game, they did bounce back by winning 3-1 against FC Dallas. Although that was the one negative thing about that game was Wando did get sent off late in this one. But they it was a good bounce back for, for this team. And then the very next game, they absolutely destroyed DC United. And this, I think, was probably the best game that the Quakes have played this season. Where, you know, they scored an early goal. Then they went up 2-0. They did kind of have... Kind of had to face a little bit of adversity when DC United did get one back and tried to push for the equalizer, but ultimately they were able to add on eventually, put up put up the four spot and and, and basically have an impressive four one win against DC United. And then in the very next game against RSL on the road, they miraculously able to come back from from a one zero deficit for for deep into the game and able to win two one in that game. And that was of course the Wando show where Wando of course came off the bench and of course score those two late goals against RSL to give the Quakes a 2-1 win and up until that point the Quakes not only have won three out of their first four games but they were at the top of the Western Conference for a couple of days and then the very next game against the Seattle Sounders a lot of people might not notice that this was actually the battle between the top two team in the Western Conference but ultimately the Sounders got the better of the Quakes as they won one nothing against them but at that point, I thought, okay, you know, yes, it's disappointed that they, of course, of course, lost at home, and you never wanted to lose and drop all three points at home, especially with this team does not do well whenever they go on the road. But you're facing against the Seattle Sounders, who's having an incredible season, and there's really no shame of losing to to the Sounders, who we know that they, of course, are right now the best team in the league. But then the very next game, they lost two nothing against the Portland Timbers. Now, on paper, you think, well, there's probably no shame of losing the, to the Timbers, too, because the Timbers are also so supposed to be a good team. And didn't you predict that they were going to finish at the top of the Western Conference, which I'm starting to kind of regret now, knowing how, how much that they, of course, struggle. But a lot of that has to be because of injuries. And this is why it's kind of alarming, the fact that this Timber side that the Quakes play was basically a T2 side. And they were even putting their, their emergency goalkeeper in this game. And yet they still lost this one. And what was also frustrating about this game, besides losing to pretty much a reserve timber side, is that they could have got a point out of this game. I mean, there was that big moment when Wando basically had a chance to tie the game up at the hour mark, but of course he missed that. And you just think that if that moment would have gone gone differently and if Wando would have scored the equalizer, I can definitely they, they think the Quakes could actually went went on to to win that game because the momentum would have been on them. Uh, they would have asked the Timbers a lot of questions, but instead, because of that missed penalty and that, that continued to give a lot of momentum to the Timbers, eventually they ride that momentum to get that second goal. And yeah, that that was really the, the first sign of kind of trouble of saying, yeah, this is definitely not go, going so so well to this team. And is this just going to be one of those, those times where we're starting to kind of see the lows of lows under Almeida well that pretty much was kind of confirmed in the next game against Sporting KC where you know I think this was probably the worst game that the Quakes have, have played so far for this season I mean I know probably the game against the Timbers that that was pretty bad but I really think this was probably the the worst game that they played because really they didn't really look good at all in this game yes they jumped out to a one nothing lead and they did look strong in the first 20 minutes but after that they did not look good good whatsoever for the remaining of the game it just feels like skc were just by far the better team for a long stretch of the the period after the 20th minute mark and they lost 3-1 against skc in that game and then of course the last game which of course was the cali classical against the galaxy and again as i was as i said in the review view view uh last week when i talked about this game there's really two ways you can view this game you could either say that this this was just a and also i just 
got the wrong score again. It's actually not one nothing in favor of the Quakes, but more like one nothing in favor of the, of, of the Galaxy. But, you know, as I said, you know, there's two ways you can look at this game. You could either say that the Quakes are lucky to only lose one nothing against the Galaxy because the Galaxy had a lot of chance, but you could also say that the Quakes probably should have got at least a point out of that game because they were really pushing on the Galaxy and they basically forced forced uh, Jonathan Bond to make 12 save and if it wasn't for, for Bond and his incredible critical display in that game then the then the quakes probably should have got a point out of that that game but instead they got nothing out of that game and this losing streak continued to now be at four games now when you look at the next eight games well things are not going to get easier for the quakes because on the 19th they are going to be playing against austin fc and although austin fc isn't really having having the best of the season this is the first home home game for austin fc and their franchise history and knowing the fact that when you look at records of teams playing their first ever home game and playing their first home game in a new stadium they tend to have a very good good record and especially with a quakes team that that is struggling like that i don't have a lot of confidence that they can of course get a, a win against austin fc and then the very next game it's getting it doesn't get any easier too because just three days later on a short rest they have to go to orlando to play against orlando city uh that, that of course pretty much wraps up in terms terms of the last eastern conference team that the quakes are going to be playing because you know the quakes only play two eastern conference teams this season just like everybody they played dc united earlier at home and now they have to go on the road to play against an orlando city side that you know we know that they are a very stingy side and a team that 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 is really hard to get get anything thing out of their their stadium and then the very next game, they, of course, do return home to play against the LA Galaxy at PayPal Park. But that is actually the only home game that the Quakes will have in a stretch where I talk about, about you know, I always mention that this stretch of the, the schedule is always the toughest for the Quakes because they're going to be on the road pretty much six out of their next seven games and also so eight out of, out of ten games if you look at the next ten, ten games. And I believe uh, this... The next one, when they, of course, play against Minnesota, is going to be the four, fourth game that they, of course, play on the road out of their last five games. And, you know, talk about this one. This is not going to be easy, too, because as much as I know the Loons this season have, have struggled in the early part of the year, the Quakes, if you look at the last couple of season when they play against Minnesota, they do not have a good record again against the Loons. So, yeah, that could potentially be a loss for the Quakes. And then the very next one, they play against Colorado, another team that the Quakes do not have a good good record against uh, against whenever they go on the 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 road road against the Rapids. And then of course playing against SKC, which again, another team that they do not have a good good record when they're playing against against them on the road. So, yeah, you could have like three straight games where where they they could could potentially be be up against it and that you know it also kind of kind of just shows you how this game between the quakes and the galaxy and that cali classical on june 26 is very very important and i think maybe we could be at that stage where this game could be a must win situation for, for the quakes because again you know with this four game losing streak and let's say if they do lose on their next two games they would be at a six game game losing streak up to that that point and you know that if the quakes are are at a six game losing streak and it doesn't matter how they play whether or not if they they're playing very well or they've been very unlucky to be at a six game losing streak fans are going to start questioning almeida and there's going to be a lot of almeida out chat chat after after that and not to mention after that the next couple of games is also going to be very tough game we could probably see a stretch where by the time when they do return home to play against the dynamo the quakes at the at the worst case scenario would be let's see uh five six seven eight nine ten they could be at a 10 game losing streak up to to that that point or could even add a stretch where they could be be winless in in 10, 10 games now uh, as i mentioned they of course play against the houston dynamo at home but then the very next game it's not going to get e any easier for them either because they're going to be playing against the seattle sounders on the road and then i know there's i, I didn't write this as the next game after the sounders uh after that they of course play against the the portland timbers so yeah, I mean, the schedule is definitely not looking good for the Quakes. And that, again, as I said, this is going to be the toughest stretch that the Quakes are going to go in. And this will really tell tell the story of whether or not if this is going to 
going to be a team that if they, you know, I'm not asking for them to like win every single game. Yeah, I, actually, I don't, I'm not even asking them to to have maybe a 500 record all, all when they're on the road. But if they can at least get some points on the road and maybe get get a couple of, of points and then, of course, make sure win that only home game that they had in this brutal road stretch, then I think it does give a little bit of optimism that maybe this team will, could potentially actually get themselves back on track because I, I have a feeling most likely by the time we head to July don't be surprised if the Quakes are going to be at the bottom uh, of the Western Con Conference with how many road games that they had and don't be surprised this is when really there's going to be people that's going to be be under their fire not only for Almeida but also with the front office where we could maybe even see some shake shake up because of how bad this team could be at this part of the schedule now looking at the stats so far this season uh, in terms of goals we have three players or four players that actually have two goals so far this season we got kcal jackson yu chofis lopez and wando with two goals followed by espinoza with one goals top assist leader you got kcal currently leads the chart with three assists and then it's followed by fierro and espinoza with two assists salinas and apicus with one assist to follow the top five uh shots in terms of of this Quakes team who has taken the, the, the most shots on so far this season, we got KCAL with 19 shots this season, Espinoza with 18, Wando with 13, Chofis Lopez with 10, and Fierro with 10. With also 10 shots so far this season. But in terms of shots on goal, it's also kind of similar. We got KCAL with 10 shots on goal so far this season, Espinoza with 8 shots on goal, Wando with 7 shots on goal, Chofis Lopez with 6 shots on goal, and Andy Rios also have three shots on goal so far this season now in terms of the fouls committed unsurprisingly you know when you look at the stats of of the the players that commits the most foul it's usually going to come from the midfield and it, it is the case with eric remedy commits the most fouls on this team with 12 but then you got k cow who of course committed nine fouls followed by paul marie with seven fouls and the same goes with espinoza and chofis lopers round up the the number of fouls committed so for this season with six fouls to his name and then of course the discipline stats when you look at yellow cards unsurprisingly Remedi, who of course commits the most fouls on this team does have the most yellow cards with four but then you got chofis lopez for free wano of course with with two two yellow cards and that's the same with andy reels and jutsen also have one yellow card and if you want to also get to the red card stats so far the only player that's been sent off this season is is wando and that was the game where unfortunately Wando made a bit of a naughty cha challenge on one of the FC Dallas players late in the game, and of course got himself sent off. But the only good thing about that was that that actually happened late in the game, and that happened right when the Quakes were three three one up and was already comfortable to get all three points at home. Now, what needs to change in terms of this team? Because like I said, as unlucky as the Quakes is when you look at this four game losing streak, there's still some things that definitely need to change with this team and I think the first thing that needs to change of this team is that Rios probably should not be anywhere it near near this team now I normally do not like to single out out a player and just kind of call out a player that clearly should not be on this team but when you look at how Andy Rios has been playing this season and you know I know a lot of Quakes fans have been frustrated with with how he's playing this season and there's a reason why that is the case because he basically offered nothing when you look at him going for the attack and even when he does try to offer you something like in that game against the the galaxy where you could say that that might have been the best game that he played but even in his best game that he have played he still aren't able to score goals and miss some big opportunity and yeah i think i think when you have those those kind kind of things that has gone on for for him this season you probably think that he should not be the the player to lead lead your your line and that i always say i don't know why does almeida tends to love to bring Rios up uh, uh, up, or play him in the starting 11 or bring him off the bench because he doesn't really offer anything. Yes, you know, last year he did score a couple of goals, but he's never been kind of that number nine player that I think he is going to be the guy that, of course, would produce goals for this team. Now, uh, the other thing that needs to change for this team is that, yeah, Almeida need to be, of course, more flexible with his tactics. And this is kind of something I've been saying since since day one when Almeida take take charge of this team well I wouldn't say day one but more like like when things started to go badly under Almeida in his first season with the Quakes where it just feels like he's very naive in terms of his tactics like he always stick with his plan a which is this man marking 
working system and when it doesn't work out and when his team is getting absolutely ripped to shreds, he doesn't change the, the tactics. And that's kind of very frustrating in terms of seeing that because, you know, I, I understand Almeida loves the man marking system, but there's got to be a point where, you know, if things are not working out, you should not continue to rely on the on what what is the definition of insanity, which is basically rely on the same tactics that he's basically using, which is just keep man marking no matter if the team is down one nothing in the game or seven nothing at at the game. And then uh, the other thing that needs to change is that JT Marksinkowski need to be bet better in goal. Now this is something that I'm kind of surprised not a lot of Quakes fans have talked about, but I have not been impressed with JT Marksinkowski this season. And I know last year a lot of people have been been want JT to be in goal to replace place Vega because we know how bad Vega what was last season and you know JT when he did step stepped in into that goalkeeping spot and pretty much took the spot away from Daniel Vega he definitely looked much better than what Vega is but when you look at this season I'm starting to see some moments where where JT Marksinkowski is having that those Daniel Vega situation where you know at times he could be be a little bit bit sloppy when he when he is trying to 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 basically take a routine team catch and sometimes he basically spilt a couple of ball that could could easily lead led to the the opposition to capitalize that and of course him committing the howler but the other thing that is kind of frustrates me about JT Morksinkowski this season is that he tends to have some hesitation when he does come off his lines like I'm start to see whenever he comes off his lines like sometimes when he come off off his lines maybe halfway he kind of just kind of he hesitate and he he kind of doesn't know whether or not if she, he, he should just come out to gather the ball or just kind of stay stay there and basically make make a save and there's just too many times when I've seen that that happen and too many times when he does come off his lines and he kind of just stop knowing the fact that maybe he shouldn't have have done that and next thing you know the ball is in in the back of the net so that is something that I think JT Markskowski definitely need need to work on now i'm not going to say that we should should potentially replace him because remember he's still a very young young goalkeeper and usually when you have a young goalkeeper like jt markskowski that is something that that young goalkeeper will need need to learn but that being said you know when you have expectation with this team this is why 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 i i kind of feel like you know jt's got to do much better i mean when i look at goalkeepers around the league and i i know that there are some teams that have good goalkeeper and there are some teams that does not have bad goalkeeper and i'm not going to say that jt markskowski is one of those players that is is considered near the bottom of the the list in terms of goalkeepers in this league but he's not that far in terms of that i feel like he's kind of a below average goalkeeper and there's just sometimes where he makes mistake that i i feel like like a more experienced goalkeeper or an MLS caliber goal starting goalkeeper should not be making during those points. And then finally, the last thing that needs to change for this team, well, it's pretty much a cl cliche that I've been saying for the past couple of years, but we probably know this is not going to change. But heck, heck with it, I'm still going to put it up and say that there's need to be some reinforcement in the summer because, like I said, when I look at this team, you know, not only the fact that I don't think this team is good enough in terms of maybe even making the playoffs, but it's definitely not good enough if they are going to be, be in the playoffs to basically face again against any tough team and that I just feel like if they do make it to the playoffs it's going to be similar to what happened last year where they're going to be probably like maybe the eighth seed or this season of course it's the seventh seed because only the top seven team does make it to the playoffs and they're going to be like the seventh seed where they're going to be playing against a very tough tough team in the first round like the Seattle Sounders or the Portland Timbers and they're just going to get absolutely destroyed in that first round when when that of course happens so yeah they absolutely need some some reinforcement in the summer but again every time it seems like i, I basically said this with the quakes the ownership doesn't listen they don't they don't really care they'll just say that this is a good enough squad for them to at least make it to to the playoffs which is also the reason why i i understand why a lot of quakes fans are very frustrated with this the this front office and also especially with this ownership of the fact that it just Feels like they're still stuck in that MLS 1.0 kind of mindset, even though right now pretty much almost every team have got gone past that MLS 1.0 mindset. With some teams that are even gone through the 3.0 mindset, where they're started to to of course make some some signings, or even maybe even reinvest in their home homegrown talent and be a very trying to use that as a way to to be a very good team 
right now this season but let me know in the comments below what do you think of this video and of course if you're a quakes fan let me know in the comments below how do you feel about the quakes this season do you think that you know this season it's been a disastrous start for the quakes and it's not going to get any better when you look at the schedule that the quakes are about to face or are you kind of like like me in some way where you're kind of a little bit optimistic with this team where they've been very unlucky in terms of, of their last four games with them not able to to finish and if they can actually show those show much better when they when they're 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 going in front of goal and actually put away their chances maybe this team can can be like what they were in the the first couple of games of the season let me know in the comments below but until then hope you guys enjoyed this video if you do make sure you guys leave a like smash that subscribe button and yeah i of course will see you guys next time